a lot of people think getting into PC VR means spending thousands on a new headset, trackers, base stations, but that's just not true anymore. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Pimax Crystal Light, a surprisingly powerful headset designed for PC users who care about visuals, clarity and extreme performance. But here's the real question. Is it actually worth it in 2025? Let's talk about it. What actually is the Pimax Crystal Light? This is Pimax's most affordable high-end PC VR headset. It's designed to offer premium visual quality without the usual high-end cost. It's a wired only headset, so there's no standalone and no initial battery, but that is on purpose because it focuses on pure PC VR clarity. Using display ports to deliver uncompressed visuals directly from your GPU. Think of it as the light version of the Pimax Crystal. So inside the box you get the Crystal Light headset itself, two controllers, the display port cable, a power cable, power adapter and an after sale support card. This makes it the complete PC VR package. No need to buy base stations or extra gear just to get started. And yes, if you do prefer lighthouse tracking, you are able to use it with the Pimax Light crystal. So let's talk about the specs. Firstly, the resolution is 2880 by 2880. This is seriously high clarity, especially when compared to the Quest 3's 2064 by 2208. It also uses QLEDs plus mini LEDs, which has displays with optional local dimming. This provides vibrant colors and deeper blacks. It also has a refresh rate of 120 hertz, allowing for smooth motion, especially during higher frame rate gameplay. It also offers a 35 pixels per degree, which makes it one of the sharpest headsets in its class. Packing in that many pixels into a small space is incredibly impressive. Now in terms of field of view, it has a 130 degree diagonal, which is wider than a lot of headsets on the market. And this definitely helps with immersion, something that I'm personally waiting for in the future Quest lineup. It also has glass etheric lenses, which means it is very sharp edge to edge. So there's no distortion like you see with Fresnel lenses. It also has fixed voviated rendering 2.0. This is a performance boosting trick to keep high FPS. Compared to the most popular device on the market, the Quest 3, this is clearly outperforming it in every way in terms of specs. But the Quest 3 is a standalone device, whereas this is a PC VR device. So why pick PC VR over a standalone? Now, although the Quest 3 is capable of doing PC VR via a USB-C cable or through Wi-Fi 6, the reason a lot of people choose PC VR is because there's no compression, full display port bandwidth, which equals ultra clean visuals and much lower latency. This is extremely important if you're into sim racing or flight sims or even high end PC modded games. It really begins to show the difference in clarity, visuals and performance. And although wireless is extremely convenient, even with Wi Fi 7 being low latency, it still is nothing compared to a display port showing raw fidelity for PC VR. One important thing to talk about this headset is comfort and setup experience. The setup was relatively straightforward. I plug in the display port directly into the back of my PC. I then plug the power cable directly into that cable. And then of course the USB goes into the back of the PC. And then you just install the Pimax Play software. Now of course the tracking is built into the headset. So no base stations are required, but you can set this up via the software. It does have a manual IP PD adjustment from 58 to 72 millimeters. Now it has an amazing weight of 815 grams, which some see is slightly on the heavier side for a PC VR setup, but this is extremely comfortable and counterbalanced throughout the headset. It also has integrated audio, plus a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and DMAS support, as well as two microphones built in. But one of the best things about this is the actual cushioning for your face. Comfort is everything in VR, especially for longer places sessions. And this has comfortable face cushions, good passive cooling, and a premium finish. But now we have to talk about the gaming experience on this device, as well as the visual clarity. This is where the device absolutely performs. Crystal clear text, especially when you're looking in the cockpit games like DCS or Microsoft Flight Sim. It also has a large field of view, making games like Half-Life Alex feel way more cinematic and realistic. And it also has very little edge 
Blur, making it sharp even on the periphery. It works flawlessly with Steam VR. The Pimax software also allows for you to add Vive trackers to it. This device doesn't have built-in eye tracking, but works with fixed Ovitid rendering 2.0. Looking for sharper details and looking at finite things up close, this device definitely is amazing in performance. If you've only used standalone VR devices, you will easily be wowed putting on this device and seeing how much clearer it is compared to the most of them on the market. So who is this device made for? If you're new to VR and you want the wireless freedom without a PC or any of the other stuff, you'll probably want to go with the Quest 3 or the Pico Ultra 4. But this device is for the people looking for the next stage up. For a very similar price point compared to these standalone devices and for the people that are chasing visuals and immersion with solid gaming from a PC, this is one of the best and most affordable options on the market right now. Not only does it compete with devices like the Quest 3 and Pico in terms of price point and outperforms them in quality, it also competes with the more higher end devices on the market, reaching close specification. Also, a lot of the PC VR games allow for modded experiences and some exclusive experiences that you just can't achieve on a standalone device. Now, if you already have a PC that can run most games, amazing, you're already set up for PC VR. But most people assume you need to spend over $2,000, pounds, euros, wherever you're from, just to be able to get into PC VR with a PC good enough to run the games. But this just isn't the case. You don't need a 4090 or spend thousands on a system, but you can get the equivalent of a PlayStation 5, or even better, for a much cheaper price point, allowing you to run games like Skyrim VR Modded, Half-Life Alex, Blade and Sorcery, Boneworks, and even if you lower the graphics on all of those games, you will still be able to achieve a much higher graphic fidelity and performance than you would on a standalone VR device. And of course, there's no mobile chipset to bottleneck the device. So you'll be running purely off your PC system and just having the headset to run the display side of things, which is why the people looking for the next step up and moving into PC VR, this is a fantastic option for you. So that leads us onto the question, should you buy the Pimax Crystal Light in 2025? If you want high-end visuals, sharp lenses, and PC fidelity at a price point that doesn't empty your bank account, then absolutely the Pimax Crystal Light is a device that you should be looking at. Not only is the price point extremely cheap, almost the same price as a Quest 3 or a Pico 4 Ultra, Pimax has done something really smart with this device. They stripped away all the fluff and focused on what makes PC VR good and how can we get more people into PC VR. Now Pimax did send me the device to review openly and honestly. I do have an affiliate link in the description which will get you the cheapest discount available or you can use the code LordzVR. That way you'll be supporting the channel and getting yourself the best discount on the market to upgrade to PC VR. Subscribe for more VR content. I hope you have a fantastic day. Much love and peace.